Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts now. You are a powerhouse, Donna Tiger Willis. Bam. 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 She's here with us on the edge, okay? The place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. That's going to be interesting because uh, her middle name is Tiger, and I want to hear her roar. She's a woman that, you know, just from observing her videos, she has an opinion. And she's not afraid to share them, nor is she afraid to go along to get along. You know, so that's very important. You've got to be able to make a decision in this world, brains. Okay, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, And you have a right to your opinion. Just don't mess with mine. (laughs) So we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. She is a mentor. Uh, I want to talk to her about what it is to be a mentor and what she's pouring into other individuals in this planet. She lives in Houston, Texas, which Texas is always an exciting place. They've always got something going on. And um, I just want to talk to her about some women's issues too, because I find that we are falling behind the pale. And it's pretty sad. You know, this is supposed to be the time of the woman. Well, Let's see if we can make her stand to attention. So, Brains, help me welcome Donna Willis uh, to the show. How are you, Donna? I am fantastic, and welcome, Brains. I'm mm. I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah and anything to do with uh, anything being female in this world? Uh, yeah, I'm big on, big on. But are you anti-male? No, nah, absolutely not. I love men. I I love great, (laughs) good men. Believe me, my voice in this world and advocating for women, I always found that this to be funny, that because I advocate so strongly for being able to be our own sovereign selves, you know, we don't have to, I don't, I I like to refer to myself as a person, right? I'm a person first, you know, I mean, another. Okay, so, all right, so you got your pronoun down, you, you know, I'm we, they, them. (laughs) Yes. That's me. That's me. And, you know, and I know it irritates people to hear these things, you know, and have these definitions defined. But, you know, really, that's what I'm all about. Right. Self-awareness and self-awareness is awareness that you can't just buffer everything and code it with something and then say, well, that's it. That's it. No, the definement is when that surface starts cracking. Right. And those those little inaccuracies start breaking up and true authenticity and the beauty of it breaks through well you know sometimes i i have to watch that word authentic because i i really have to temper uh, temper down my uh authenticness because some I, I can give it to you 110 percent, and we have to be careful with that because it's a fine delicate dance everybody is not ready for our injection of honesty We have to meet people where they are. We have to respect their space because you and I are very, you know, strong personalities. We really have to watch that. Have you ever got yourself in some trouble? (laughs) Oh, sure, sure. All of 2020. I decided 2020 was going to be the year that I would allow myself to be messy authentic Mm. and see And I mean, I wanted to feel that fullness because I believe sometimes I I hear you. I I do. I hear you because I realized after 2020, I was like, wow, I was really out there, man. I'd confront you like crazy. And I, you know, but that roar, sometimes you when you've only meowed, when you when you've had it pushed down for so long, sometimes that roar, that first roar is messy. Yeah, it is messy. And it's very. Sometimes it's, it can be a bit convoluted because you're, you're trying to get out a lot of emotions, what you feel, 
But have we really processed those emotions because they've been sp suppressed down? So 2020, I'm not going to go into it too much, but uh, was it because of the, the election cycle and all that was going on? Uh, oh, that, man. but no, mostly, no, it was mostly, it really, really, I decided that year that I was going to, I mean, I've been like this most of my life, but that year I was like, you know what, to the whole world, I'm going to stand up and say the stuff with uh, George Floyd and everything, that, that, that ticked it off. I was able to move from a place that I didn't realize how buffered it was. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that look from you. Right. I, I didn't see fully. I thought military brat lived all over the world. Texas. I love Houston because of its diversity. I, all these things I thought in my own self-awareness, I had ran up against, knew who I was about it. No, that stripped everything. I was like, I am so naive. I am so not what I thought. And I got to get real. I got to get real with the people in this world. I got to get real with other experiences. I've got to get real with listening. I wanted to, my built my roar by wanting to have people hear me and who I am, my past traumas, my helping with my healing, blah, 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 whatever oppression I felt. And here I was still buffered in knowing all of the ways in which I was still buffered from realities. Well, you know, and, and I say this with love, uh, you know, this illusion of white privilege. Uh, my friends would say to me, and I'll use my white privilege. I told them, baby, it's not a visa card. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you can't just whip it out. And it hasn't changed. If During this now uh, run for the Congress, it's really getting ugly. It's really getting ugly. And I traveled to Europe and I looked at how things happened historically, how they even got things done, built castles and pyramids without the technology. We can't get nobody to change a light bulb in a street light. Lazy asses. They don't want to do anything. But the soul has to evolve. And that's what you specialize in. Soul evolution as yeah. a speaker. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like. Well, what it looks like is it's, um, I've always had this ability, okay? And I and it's not unique to me. It's just that somehow I was born with it, that switch turned on, right? And massive intense impact, didn't know that as a child, raised in an environment, uh, narciss covert narcissistic mother. I was the scapegoat, so I was always going in, right? Mm. So scapegoat believes it must be me. It must be me. It must be me. And I would sit as a very solitary, strange child. I was an outsider in the world. I was always kind of ostracized, bullied, pushed out, even from my own family. So I would sit lots of times as a very transcendentalist child, even though I didn't know that what that was at the time. Right, right, right. And I would sit and go within. You know, you sit and have little conversations with yourself. Well, I didn't have friends. Military brat moved a lot, being that strange child I was really kind of introverted and I would sit and have these conversations and I would I remember them at you know, four to six years old eight, you know uh sitting there and having these conversations and knowing that some of the voice some of the things and responses I heard weren't my imagination they weren't me coming right. up with answers right and I just I remember then just taking it naturally and I would get like I remember one time watching kids playing outside and I said and this is a term at universe now, but I'd say, God, you know, why don't they like me? And I would just hear this soft voice, not in a sad way. I was a very observant child. I observed and I didn't have these feelings of like sadness. I was just curious. Why? What is it? You know, and I would hear these soft, wonderful mentoring words of like, you are you. I love you for you. It wouldn't be like this coddling thing. So as my progression went on and I kind of lived, you know, in that space of being able to hear what I now know was my soul because I can hear it all the time. And then I realized I could hear other people's souls. Always have been able to. Wow. So the whole evolution really comes from that, that the more that I see that we learn to know thyself, 
Like huge, huge philosophical saying, but how often? There's a lot of our situations I've been, I've owned a corporation, I've owned, I've been an entrepreneur, I've worked in corporations at a high executive level, and everything always came around to, April, self-awareness. The more we know what we want and don't want, who we are, what we like, what we don't like, all of these things, we become, the self-doubt goes away. The discernment, we can then start hearing our true soul and not the mind chatter, not the morass mm -hmm. that's telling us, well, what do they think? That, what do they think about me? Did I wear that right? Did I say that right? All you, of you that. Develop, you develop a, a thick skin and that what I call, I don't give a shit attitude. Yeah, well, it's I, I don't give a shit. Not, not everybody develops a thick skin. I, as an intense empath, I've literally, the last couple of years between the pandemic and 2020, in 2021, where I had $193,000 worth of damage to my home, that was a nightmare year, a nightmare year. And in self-awareness, you're constantly learning about yourself. And I learned a lot about myself that year. Were you caught in that flood down there? No, I wasn't in the flood. It was during the freeze. We had freeze situations down here in Houston, the South. Homes aren't built for freezing temperatures for a certain amount of days. Mm. And it bursts a lot of pipes. Our, our, okay. That's a whole nother story, right? But our homes are built differently. So just, you know, all of this learning and going through things. But, you know, I realized as, as an intense empath, I'm like all of my nerve endings are always receiving frequency. Mm. And I can never turn that off. I know how to mute it. I know how to handle it now, but so my thin will never be, my skin will never be thick, but my boundaries will be strong. Exactly. And that's, you know, you got to have one or the other. That's right. Because I will people, always feel, people I will always poke feel. In the bear. You know, you got these outside people that, you know, when you get yourself together and they see a change in you, they see a new aura, they see a new light. You got a different conversation. You walk in a different kind of way. They want to pull you right back into the chaos. I do. But with self-awareness, it won't happen. Once you really start taking on self-awareness, it's like learning balance. Once you start learning the concepts and how to start listening to your own soul, which takes some feedback sometimes. And that's what I do. Um, and I'm literally listening to your soul and having you hear yourself in a different way that you've never heard. Because, you know, we can't see the tip of our own nose, right? It's that simple right. of a principle. Right. We cannot see the tip of our own nose, no matter how much we try. So that's it's that reverberation. I'm really just a messenger of your own thoughts. And then you start hearing it yourself. Right. And I'm going to tell you, it's the most ultimate guidance ever. It's perfect. Give us a couple, give us a couple things to heighten our awareness and, and heighten our sensibility to the soul evolution. What do, what do we, what do we, is it a conversation? Is it a meditation? Is it a cocktail? <laughs> you know, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of different things. So it's, you know, it's, it's some of the concept of I've created mantras where I'll speak to myself. One of the biggest concepts that I use as a tool that's powerful is mirror talk. Mm. Sit quietly with yourself stare at yourself until you see nothing but the pupils of your eye you let everything blur out you know that time when you just stare at something and everything else gets kind of blurry stare until you look so deeply and then start talking to yourself wow and start saying you know and i've had conversations with myself where i'm like god Donna, that was not a great decision that was so why did you do that and answer yourself you don't get attached to the emotion so um eckhart tolle he talks about, and he really helped me years and years ago about mindfulness, right? So you're talking to yourself, but you're talking to yourself as literally an objectification. You yeah. know, you're just seeing yourself, but you're looking into your eyes, your pupils. It's that direct. Mm. And you're being that radically honest with yourself. And you cry. You get mad at yourself. You laugh at yourself, right? Like, oh, my God, I can't right. believe I was thinking that. You know, how silly. No wonder. And it really starts clearing out. That's one of my basic tools that I'll use to help people really start. And I mean, it's powerful. Oh, I can powerful. imagine. I, I can imagine. I love to have a meeting with the board of directors up here. That's right. To and it's what really going on. And to check, you know, check in and check out. Allow myself to be able to do that, to banter back and forth. People don't give themselves any space. They're running on automatic. 
And they're running on what everything else is telling them. What society tells them, their environment. That's what self-awareness does. It takes the, it undoes that onion. It takes off the layers and layers. It doesn't mean, like you said earlier, it doesn't mean that you don't have times that you know, oh, I'm going to put on that suit to present this way and to create this perception, right. but I'm still coming from me. Right. But you got to get under there first. And that's what that does. I practice radical self-honesty. And that took all the whining out of my world. That took all the gossip. It took out all of the... Uh, you know, oh my gosh, what do they think of me? It took out all of the fear of being innovative, a risk taker in meetings, maybe with executives, and I'm not at their level, but they ask a question and I've got an answer. Yeah. Where most people would sit and and I would get comments later like, who, who, who is she? Who does she think she is? But that was a good suggestion. Well, I didn't care if they didn't. They asked a question. I was at the table. I had an answer. So it's it's really, it, it has you walk in. The, it kind of reminds me, we can think of Oprah, right? Whether you're a fan or not, she has made, you know, when you rise to certain levels, you're going to get haters. You're going to get more and more you know, people. I say this, I let the haters be my motivators. And if there's not somebody talking about me, then I'm not doing anything. Right. But it takes a certain level. It takes a certain level to get there, to feel like, you know, a lot of people, and I've been, I've coached everything from chairmen of the board, you know, executives down to artists, to midwives, to retired people, you know, entrepreneurs. And there's always a common thread that once you reach, you start reaching these levels of success, you get confronted. You get confronted with, wait a minute, I have no boss to tell me except for my clients if I'm doing good or not. I If I'm lying about stuff, am I lying? And I see it. And I'm going to say this, and I know it's going to be controversial, but all day long online with online marketing now and everything having exploded, there are so many, and I forgive them, but there's so many white liars, so many white liars. And when I say white and liars, and they're and little and white lies. And oh, I know, make 30000 a month. I do this. Again, yeah, but embellishers. And, you know, I hear these people still talking about, I can get you to six figures. I get $10,000 a month. It's a lie, brains. Because when you or I go to them for a business opportunity, oh, there's a whole bunch of excuses. They can't do it. You're making that kind of money. you got expendable income. So listen to that. Yeah, I want when I get a coach or a mentor, I want to see what I need exuding out of their pores, mm -hmm. like pimples. I want to see it. I want to feel it, and I want to have the ability to outgrow them. I don't want to mm -hmm. stay. I don't want to stay stuck with that individual forever. I take what they have, and it's it's a give and take. There is some ROI because I'm pouring into my coach, like they're pouring into me. I'm pouring into them what this new business structure, what this new life uh, adventure, what this health challenge, what all these things have done to me, for me, bought me, taught me. Okay? So they have another template that they can develop for the next person. Now, you also, um, you're a speaker. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I get, you know, I get exactly what you're, you're saying. Who's your audience, though? Who who are you speaking to? Well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back up just a second because what you just said and mentioned was very profound. Because here's what I can say, you know, with the online marketing stuff and the the, you know, I'm kind of a secret in the world because my clients and I've never I've been coaching for thirty years. Mm. My goal is my client after twelve weeks is literally has evolved to a plate, it's like learn how to ride a bike. You can't undo that level of balance. And I, I, to me, the proof's in the pudding, right? The proof's in the pudding, have your clients. And that's what I would say to anybody looking at anything online. It's not about who flashes the most. What are the results? Out of all my clients, there's only been one that didn't get those results and I fired her because she just wanted to pay me to be a friend. No, 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 honey. Yeah, I'm about yeah, your life changing. I'm I about your coach, life evolving. You better not need me after 12. I only coach five people a year because this is not a girlfriend session. That's right. That's right. So let's, uh, so I'll go into speaking. So who is my audience? You know, my audience um, are people who, who 
yearn. They, 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 there's this constant kind of yearning in them of still not feeling quite fulfilled. Because I'm telling you, I've coached executives that still have that. They've done all, they've checked all the boxes, you know, kids in private school, they've got a you know, blah, blah, blah. But there was something missing, right? There's always this little bit of something. But really, I, I just like to speak about reality. So my audience is the world. Okay. My audience is the world that wants that that is like, I want to listen to something that inspires me. I want to listen because I'm looking for something. It's just that little bit of a nuance. You know, it's that little bit of a tick. You could be perfect. You can be in pain. You can be however. It's just this little yearning, this little scratch, because that's how I experienced my life, this little scratch of hearing people say you have so much potential. But where? What do you mean I have so much potential? Right. You have so much of this or, you know, you're so great at that, but you never still feel like so you follow that trail. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's people who have followed a lot of paths. They're following the people. breadcrumbs. That's right. Those breadcrumbs have been left on the ground by other birds. That's right. And so I, I, I speak to people and I speak of things that bring you home. So that your, uh, your path is your path no matter what path it is. Two roads diverge, right? And I pick the one less traveled so that I can take my own machete. I can take my own weed eater and I can create that path. Right. It's never it's never worked going down that other path of somebody else. Not no, fulfillment. It's not. And you get lost along the way because again, like you said, your own dreams and desires and hopes are submerged. But let me ask you some, some creative things because... I see that you've done the introspective work, the child work, that you've had that conversation. It's an ongoing dialect between you and self. But let's talk about your creativity and your love for art. How you have been able to pour maybe your doubts, your sorrows, your insecurities, your questions into works of art. How did you get into art? So art I'm going to take as I'm a writer, um, but I also have paintings that I have painted it's the writing came as a child in those moments of introspectiveness sitting you know by a tree and a, a, you know and, and it just the words would flow to me again I would allow myself and children were so innocent we're such innocent wonderful vessels right that can receive and I had no other parameters in my life to tell me how to filter these experiences I had for myself and it, it would always just kind of come in kind of a download, I'll use that word, of words and sensations and flow. So writing has always been a passion of mine. I've got a book in the works right now called Raw and Naked, um, based off of my life. And my life is an intense empath, although the book isn't going to read. You won't kind of get that unless you know it. But that just flows. That just that is literally me tapping into my soul when I write. Even when I write, you know, not all the time, but most of the time, even when I'm making posts online on social media, it's coming from my passion. It's coming from my passion of what I feel about others, what that's I feel what I, about. That's the what world. I see. I see your videos. It's just, you know what, just spot on. This is not scripted. This is just really what's going on right now. Let me share this with you and you know, I hope that you're in a place to receive it. Yeah. Uh, my passion is poetry. I'm a poet and um, I hadn't written poetry for a long time until the other day. I went out to the beach and took my chair because I was long. I just came back from a trip and I was longing to be back on that cruise ship. Girl, I want to be back on that cruise ship so bad. And I just looked out at the ocean. And the ocean looked back at me and the waves kept bringing me messages and I tell you, I wrote 10 pages and I was like, wow. And I felt such a release because it was a brain dump that allowed me capacity and space for new, innovative ideas. What do you tell the person that's right there on the edge that's looking for something new and something innovative and something exciting and something creative to spark them, to, to reignite them? How do you encourage them? I would encourage it by, um, you know, every year I create this unspoken mantra or vision for myself and I let it 
just kind of come to me like what you know what do, what do I want I ask questions questions are really important the way that you ask them right absolutely so a lot of my wait, coaching wait, say, is about say that again, sister. it is the way that you ask the question that's right you always ask in a in a uh, a way that you know as a matter of fact I want a pair of shoes or I want a husband or I want a new job sometimes you have to be very specific but more often than not, you have to be very ambiguous. What else yes. is possible? Yes, yes. How can I get any better than this? Mm -hmm. What is, you know, what is my sole purpose? Mm -hmm. Lead me to it because then that engages the subconscious mind to bring mm -hmm. forth these ideas because right. now you're asking because it's been sitting back there waiting for you to ask the question. Mm -hmm. They don't, uh, people don't understand the power of the subconscious mind. There's about seven or eight people in your brain that you have never been introduced to. <laughs> yeah. And, and wording is really important to me. Yeah. I will erase, if I say something that I know is going to draw forth, uh, words are powerful to me. I love language. I love literature because of the power of the word. And it's just, e each letter has its own energy and you put them together, right? And you've either, it's spell, spelling. And that's not about witchery or Wicca or anything like that. That's spell. It's that's spell. Right. It's from Latin. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And so, you, so you what I- to put it together. Yeah, so each, for some reason, I was just inspired about eight years ago where I just kept coming up with this word of the year. And they all started with R. And I don't know why. I had no idea why. Don't, I don't question stuff, right? Eh, okay. So it might have been rebuild and then rejuvenate and then whatever. And then this one year, it was roar. In 2020, it was roar. Mm. And I mean, this is before anything. This this happens in January. I don't ever do resolutions. Right. I do. <laughs> I build like that. So one year, um, there was a big catalyst, you know, move happening with my business that was going to take it to 5 million. And it was intimidating. I'm a military brat. I'd never ran businesses before all of the things that I took on everything I did blind. And it was huge for me. And I remember feeling like I used to call myself a cliffhanger. I'd be on the edge of that cliff going, ah, I can't like, it's, I need security. Oh. I can't trust my wings. So that next year, I envisioned myself standing on the edge of a cliff. And I invite people to literally take this vision on for themselves if they're looking at going on that edge, because it's about your thoughts and what you put into play first. And then it's about action, right? Then it's got, it's got to be followed with action. And I would envision myself standing at the edge of a cliff. Like, I mean, like I'm about to jump off. My heels are right there. And I let myself for that whole year feel that fear that I've been holding on to all my life. And I just kept seeing an eagle soaring, an eagle soaring. And for that year, it was the only vision I would keep in my head was an eagle soaring. I am a soaring eagle this year. I'm going to take flight. Mm -hmm. And that year I took flight wow. because I trusted my wings. I had to just keep visualizing that I could jump off that cliff and trust myself and my wings would catch me Scary. and they That's did powerful that is so powerful uh, and and to hold on to that to write those mantras down to repeat them you know to have them in certain i have them in strategic places that i know that i'm going to have to focus on during the course of my day to bring it to my attention to again re-engage the subconscious mind let's ask some fun questions about you though okay if you were a car, what kind of car would you be? I would be, I'll probably go back to the car that I briefly had um, my senior year of high school. And it was a 1969 Rally Sport Camaro. Oh. Copper colored. Okay, so now Camaros have a lot of power. Do you like speed and, and that that thrust and that roar? Does that excite you? The speed and the top down and music blaring. Yeah. Wow. What uh, brings you the greatest joy, Donna? I will say, honestly, the greatest joy, and this is going to sound like I'm on the a beauty pageant stage. The greatest joy I ever have is when I see people awaken to themselves when they really, really fall in love with themselves 
in a in with humility, gratitude, because I know that from there, all things, all things are good. So that and my grandkids and my kids. What brings um what brings you to tears? Well, let's see. I've been married 28 years and so he can sometimes, but we're so opposite. We're so opposite. And it's, I, I needed him in my life. Okay. I, I needed him and in my life. Well, what, what really truly brings me to tears though, on a regular basis is the pain, the unnecessary pain and suffering of anyone else, anyone being treated with lack of dignity, lack of respect, lack of care, anyone that's brushed over, anyone that has had their voice stolen, anyone who's felt imprisoned, harmed, hurt, that 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 will bring me to tears at any and given moment. The reason moment. why I ask that is because you, you know, self-disclose that you are a very intense empath. Mm -hmm. But girl, that is a lot of weight to carry. Mm -hmm. I don't save normal. anybody. Yeah, I don't save anybody anymore. So any intense impasse or impasse that ever want to contact me, believe me, I have been the course as far as being bombarded, taking things on, feeling things that other felt and thinking it was mine or mine to fix. Mm -hmm. um, and I there was I'll, I'll just say it here and I'll recommend it. It's a PDF online. I can't even remember when it was written. It was probably in the 80s. And it is a PDF book called No Time for Karma. And it changed my freaking way of it. It took me a while to turn down the volume and the, of the frequencies and not receive all the time. But it it relieved me of the the thought that I had to save everybody because I would have killed myself, April. Everything I wanted to be an ACLU attorney. I wanted to fight for everybody whose human rights were being. I cried about children dying in Ethiopia. I cry about. I can feel it all around the globe. I just got tingles when I even said that. I can feel it. And it helped me understand the energy exchange and the levels and a concept that I could embrace that stopped me from thinking as an empath that I had to save everybody. I'm not, that's, that's Donna, not my answer. There's necessary evils in the world too that have to run its course. And that's why we get stuck at the gate sometimes that we can't move forward because this has to come to pass. You look at all the people that died during COVID, wasn't nothing anybody could do. And I mean, they were dying. There's still people that are dying mm -hmm. from that. It's not over, it's just suppressed. Um, you think about the overlooked and underserved in all communities, black, white, Asian, um, You. Think of when I was in Europe, I didn't see homeless. Here, I live in America's finest city, and I can go right downtown and see a cotton-picking internment camp of individuals. But what are we going to do? We can't overwhelm ourselves. We can't overthink it. This, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is a part of the process. I agree. We I are agree. in a lunar vortex. I tell you that every interview brains, look it up. That's your homework. We're all trying to get through this portal, this little tiny hole. And we're not all going to squeeze through. Mm -hmm. But self-awareness, being kind, showing love, being grateful, giving a hand up and a hand out when you see it. You know, we went to breakfast the other day. I made my husband pull over uh, because I saw a woman with a sign. I don't even, I couldn't even see the words on the sign, but I knew that she was in need. And anybody that can stand out there in the middle of the street, traffic going major intersection, and ask, can you help me? Absolutely. Because I'm about to go here into this fine restaurant and spend a bunch of money. So you think about all of these things. If you had three wishes, what would they be? That the knowing, one would be that the knowing that we have before we're born and we come into this realm, it's going to be very philosophical, and we come into this physical realm of flesh, never left us. Mm. 
that when we're born, we knew everything we kept and retained all of that brilliance and wonderfulness and knowing of all things. Mm. What a beautiful physical world this would be. Wow. What's your other two? The other two. Mine is to lose 40 pounds. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. So if, if I wanted to do something like that, so the other one of them would be, I've always wanted to be able to, A, I want to be able to uh, teleport like on Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. That's how our travel advances, right? Right. And if I wanted to do a non another non-philosophical one, it would be that, because obviously my wish would be world peace and everybody be happy and lever you know, blah, blah. But, um, and see the infinite of the infinite, infinite vastness of the universe. But really it would be, I always wish that we had these machines that we could just stand under. And I do this in my mind mentally, but, and it just goes, beep, and it gives you whatever shape you want for that oh, day, whatever shit. look you want. You're <laughs> you can have a Kim Kardashian booty in, in five seconds. Because, you know, the soul has no color, no shape, no size, no, no, no gender. Size. And it would be so much fun. It's just like, whatever, I, what do I want to be today? I know. I That's that's one of my wishes is I wish I could time travel. Yeah. Ooh, I would just love that. Uh, it's, and then sometimes I wish I could be invisible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But <laughs> that's a double-edged sword because I would probably hear some stuff and see some stuff and be like, that's going on in the world <laughs> oh yeah 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 sometimes yeah sometimes i don't i don't profess that this is a great way to be but sometimes ignorance is bliss exactly as if we what really the, really knew what is one of the sweetest things that you put on your palate what is one of the sweetest things uh i would probably say a nice chocolate mousse mm. That's always good. I, I'm really fickle. <laughs> it's why I don't have any tattoos because I always feel like I, you know. So yeah, my favorite things. I like chocolate mousse. So you just, it just that's what came up for me. It makes you happy. It's and creamy. Yeah. And Donna, what do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be that every single person that ever had any wisp of me um it left inspiration for their own greatness so actually i'll say you know my purpose is i stand to be the great i stand for the greatness of humanity from infancy and beyond mm -hmm. and that's what my legacy is i would like for that greatness that wish and blessing for others greatness to be realized and rise on down the line pass the torch pass the torch multiply it well let me tell you you will um you're gonna get that and then some because each one must teach one yeah well i got it actually so it, when i said that mantra to myself and said this is who i am that several years ago now i have a different one for me now but right after that so i what i did for a living was i produced events for nonprofits. Oh. so i got to do good and get paid to build the party right and the very next, right after I created that sense for myself of who I'm the greatness for humanity from embassy and beyond, the very next day, a past midwife of mine called me and asked me to please coach her organization, Birth, which is literally having its 22nd, I think, anniversary this weekend. Wow. And it helps women and families and everything with their birthing choices and options and rights. And that was literally the next day that was given to me. And then I have coached since then teenagers. And then I went on to coach retired people. So I was able to cover the gamut. So, and that's a blessing. That's a blessing. It is a blessing. But you know what even is the bigger blessing is that you are here to see it come to fruition. You are able to live in the space. So many people die and they're the martyr. People are looking over their casket. Oh my God, he or she was such a great worker. They never missed a day of work. They were always dedicated to the company, but they were never dedicated to themselves. They lost out on their family. They didn't do the self-care that was needed and they didn't see their dreams come true. Brains, you still have to dream. But remember, nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. And you have to be the one to ignite that fire, 
to have that tiger roar within you, to have that passion. Not, again, be the people pleaser. You can't take on everyone's responsibility because that is their life journey. That is their, uh, that's their uh, row to toe. That's their responsibility. That's not your responsibility. But if you can coach them, if you can love them and nurture them along the way, you know, your job is done. Donna, you are just amazing. And I'm so glad that you were here with me on the edge. Please tell my brains how to get in contact with you. They want to work with you. Or if you got any current promotions that are coming up, a book, let us know. Absolutely. So I'm going to tell you the easiest way is facebook.com forward slash you. You, not Y-O-U, you evolved. Okay. My website is yourevolution.coach. But Facebook is the best and easiest way to contact me. Carefree, happy to have a chat with anybody, any question they want to ask. I love to just contribute. It fills my soul. So um, any current projects... You know, after my house went through all of that construction, it was really hard on me. I kind of put some things aside, but I'm building out a year-long program that really is Who Am I Really? Mm -hmm. And it's a four-part program. You can take one course, two courses. It's Who Are You in the World? Who Are You in Love? Who Are You in Finances? And they literally follow the chakra colors, mm -hmm. right? Finances is the red. Finances mm -hmm. is you know, the Kundalini. It's down here, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I follow it all the way up. And I did that happen naturally. That just came to me that way. I didn't mean it to be that way. So I've got a program that I'm building on. Um, and it's actually called the prism principle, the aspects of the prism of light, you know, coming through you and how it changes and shifts. Mm -hmm. So I've got that. It'll be coming out, but I'll announce that when it comes out. Okay. Um, my book, Raw and Naked, I'm working hot and heavily on it all the time. I love the title. I see it's spicy. It's certainly about uh, coming of age. But I'm going to tell you, my 30s and 40s are going to light you up and make me make you go, hmm, uh, she's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it's about. It's about enjoying this journey. I don't believe that this is the beginning, and I really don't think that it's the end. But we're going to take you everywhere you need to go on the edge. Thank you so much, Donna. You are the queen of everything. I love the way that you roar. Okay, Brains? Go in. We need you to like, love, share, subscribe. Just four little things. Like, love, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about this because this can change somebody's life. Somebody there is, is submerged. They're overwhelmed. They think that they're alone, but they're not because there's brains here on the edge. Like that one right there. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Donna. Bye. Thank you, April. Bye.